All right, welcome back. Now, as we might have all seen that on Thursday last week, Brazil's former president, Lula da Silva, who was president between 2003 and 2010, has been sentenced to a nine and a half years in jail for corruption and money laundering. In another case, of course, I think it was in March when the world saw South Korean president Park Jin Hai removed from office and she was also arrested. The 65 year old is now in jail on corruption charges. She's accused of abusing her power on bribery. Uh, extortion as well as other crimes but to talk to us about these two cases of course and bring it a little bit here at home uh, i'm joined by professor john strimlow from the department of international relations at vets university prof good morning to you and thank you so much for coming through. good morning good morning big subject thank you a very important one and I, I just want us to start with uh, the recent case of lula da silva let's just look back at his reign in brazil well, you see, um, it's really a tragedy because uh, Lula da Silva, or Lula as he's known the world over, was an extremely popular president of Brazil for two terms, and a man who has risen above very poor circumstances to be able to provide his people with much greater economic justice and growth during the financial crisis. Uh, Barack Obama, the president of the United States, joked with da Silva at one point that he, Lula, was the most popular man in the world <laughs> politically. And then to fall so far in light of this conviction that you've just reported on uh, is a sign that we have to be vigilant about corruption wherever it occurs, let the law take its course, but recognize that da Silva will claim, Lula will claim, that his political opponents are using this, that's always a risk, that the news is not being fair, that is always a risk. But I think that the judge, when rendering this, this decision, said this is really a tragedy. I wish I wasn't doing this uh, to uh, Lula, but the law, no man is above the law. Yeah, yeah. and uh, is it just him? Or is it, uh, or has Brazil's political system always been built on corruption? Well, I'm no expert on Brazil, but generally speaking, uh, corruption is, is endemic as human beings. Greed does often trump uh, service and, and hope. Um, all societies have to deal with this, and today we don't know whether there's actually more corruption or that we're just more aware of corruption as, as investigative journalists and others reveal it. Uh, and it is an instrument oftentimes of political opponents using corruption not for themselves but for others so you have to take a detached view but trust in the legal system and the Brazil legal system is reputed to be quite strong now Transparency International has graded the various BRIC countries that South Africa is a member and it may surprise some of your viewers to know that among uh, China Russia Brazil uh, uh, India and South Africa South Africa is seen to be relatively less corrupt than the others uh, it has a rating of, of, uh, of, of 40, the, the lower the rating, I mean, I'm sorry, 45, the higher the rating, the less corrupt it is, whereas Brazil and China and India have 40, and Russia is very corrupt with 29. That is so what on a plane with yeah. Nigeria. What, what we're seeing here at home is nothing as compared to the other BRICS members. Well, it has, <laughs> it has a, a, a better standing overall, yeah. but for those of us who have to deal with, say, bribery with police or in our schools or in immigration and home affairs, um, that really affects our sense of who we are as citizens, and we can never accept that corruption is normal at any level, be it head of state or in our daily lives. Yeah, but let's just go back to Da Silva's issue prove. Th there was a time when Lula was hailed for his policies that he turned around Brazil in terms of um, their, their health policies. What, what changed? Because Brazil enjoyed um, good economic status during his time. Well, you have to separate the two. The, the, the scandals during his presidency were well known. He was protected as president while president. The uh, trial that has just completed was after after his presidency, which ended, as you say, in 2011, and um, it, it, is, it is a question of whether or not uh, he has proven before the law uh, uh, to be guilty on post-presidency money laundering and the improvement of his beach house, which I think was nearly a million dollars, but uh, by standards that we talk about here, that's not as much money as, as, 
as is often the case that, that, that flows to, 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 to leaders. Um, but it's, it's true that the record stands and his progress as a social reformer should not be um, uh, ignored, even though we are saddened by his conviction. And he's got four more cases pending against him, so this is not over and he's appealing. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at uh, the Petrobras scandal that involved um, oil state company that saw a mess of corruption investigation taking over Brazil's politics. And we bring it here home. Let's uh, t take a look at the alleged Gupta corruption in South Africa. Is it fair to equate it to what happened in Brazil? Well, it's certainly fair to compare, uh, to learn. Um, what you're seeing in Brazil right now is that there are accusations being leveled in this Petrobras uh, scandal mm -hmm. that cover both political parties all across the board so that the Brazilian people could say, well, all politicians are corrupt. Yeah. No, not all politicians are corrupt, but maybe there is more pervasive corruption in Brazilian politics than there is in South Africa. That would be the argument of Transparency International, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that the media here is very, very aggressive in pursuing that and is protected which is good yeah but w what we've seen in, in Brazil is that a whole lot of executives and politicians who were involved in that scandal were jailed so I is it a, a too far-fetched idea to see those involved here with uh, the entire Gupta issues Gupta scandal uh, to, to, to see them persecuted maybe well that's always a very difficult question to answer yeah. remember that during during the administration of Tabu Mbeki there was some minor uh, scandals uh, Tony Ngeni for example yeah. and he was punished and people did go to jail and at the moment there is a sense of impunity among uh, political leaders that is being debated very actively in our society uh, and must be resolved with the courts. But our court system here, and another reason why South Africa is viewed as, as, as not as corrupt as, as, uh, as, as China or India or, or certainly the Russia, which is the worst, yeah. is that our court system holds. And so I think we have to uh, support that as citizens. All right. But what are we seeing from all these cases, Prof? Are we seeing governments, you know, starting to, to be intolerant of corruption, maybe? Let's look at the South Korea issue, the Brazil issue, and a whole other cases. Well, that's the bottle is half full. And I tend to be of the view that um, the more that we know about this, um, uh, it may make us think that things are worse than they actually had been when it was under the cover, under the rug. Yeah. Uh, that bringing it out into the open, ventilating it, the work that you and your colleagues do in investigating uh, uh, corruption is all to be applauded and we're seeing that uh, um, we're, we're, we're discovering that there's a lot going on that shouldn't go on and that should be addressed and as Mandela always said no man is above the law all right let's leave it at that prof thank you so much for chatting to us thank you thank you very much indeed well there you have it uh, that's professor john strimlow from the department of international relations at vets university talking to us about the lula da silva issue um, as well as of course other related cases that we have seen unfolding including this the one in south korea and of course trying to you know compare what happens there with what is happening currently in south africa all right it's 25 minutes after seven o'clock let's just take a look at some tops